Okay, um, just some introduction of what we do at the university. I'm Steve Chilton. I'm the Educational Development Manager in the Centre for Learning and Teaching Enhancement. I'm Kirsty MacDonald um, from the Centre for Learning and Teaching Enhancement and I'm an educational developer. I work with academics mostly in the business school um, around the use of learning technologies to support learning and teaching. Okay, what we're going to do uh, in the brief is to talk to you about social media for learning and we're going to go through some of the things that uh, we're talking to the academic colleagues about. We're going to be looking at what social networking is all about. We're going to be looking at um, how it's used in higher education and in particular how it's used at this university uh, and specifically looking at the value and the impact of social media in education. And we're also going to have a little bit of a warning for you later on about what your digital footprint is and what the likely consequences are of some of these actions you might be taking. Um, and don't relax because this is going to be interactive for some things that you have to do. Okay, so mobile phones may be required, but I would ask if you've got a mobile that's on, it's on silent, please. Um, colleagues in the business school actually complain about their students running their businesses within class. Uh, see, none of you are doing that, I'm sure. But anyway, you might be needing to use a phone shortly. You will be. <coughs> we want to start off, um, these are the questions that we're hoping to address with you today, but we want to start off by asking you a question about social networking and what it means for you. And we want you to use your mobile phones to provide your answers. <clears throat> so the first activity is having a think about what social media tools you've used in your academic studies. And as I say, to get your answers from you, we want you to send a text message to this number, 07537402400. You must start your text message with the word, well, with the letters, <coughs> E-D-U-M-U. Okay, and then what we'd like you to do is list the tools that you've used and the purpose. You can use TechSpeak, obviously you've only got 150 odd characters in your text message to get this information across to us. Um, but have a think about what social media tools you use and send us a text. Yeah? Get your phones out. Yeah. <laughs> List tools and if you've got space, what you use them for. Okay. okay, that's fine. For those of you who have got credit on your phones and can send a text message, what were you going to ask me? It's very important that you use those five characters of the first five in the message and then the space after it. It will then go to the aggregating website that we're going to show you as part of the process. But we're interested to know what you're already doing and what you're doing educationally. Also, what you think are social media tools and what you don't think social media tools is all part of it. Oh seven five three seven four oh two four hundred and make sure you've got E D U M U and a space as the first characters in your text message. Anyone in the room proudly not owner of a mobile phone? <laughs> I'm proudly an owner of not a good mobile phone. <laughs> there are people in, uh, is it the law department, who actually use SMS messaging as their um, assessment method. So the lecturer will just bring you uh, a, a question and you've got a very limited amount of time and you've got a very limited amount of characters, obviously. To respond, then it's just quite a good way of getting um, quick responses to knowledge type questions from students. Uh, the university has a piece of software called Edutext, Edutext. which basically <coughs> accumulates the responses and then allows the lecturer to see it. We're going to use a little third party tool to show you the responses that you've given us in a moment. Natalie, you can do this as well, do you want? Thank you. <laughs> On an essay, just a few instances of things you're using. Yeah. 
Can I have a look? Yes. Has everyone got the number? Because we're going to move on to have a look at the results. I will yell it if you need it. Okay, we've got five responses so far. Put this back up on the screen, give the rest of you a bit longer. Okay, can we see a kind of theme coming through? I can see Facebook. Facebook on every single one of those. Is that socially or educationally? We'll come to that in a minute, maybe. Okay, someone's running their own business, converse with customers. <laughs> Collaboration, Google Docs, that's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> Right, Delicious is in there. We'll come back to Delicious at a point later on, which uh, makes a particular point about sustainability. This Wanderlust, that's a new one on me. Who put that down in their message? Yeah, can you tell us a bit about it? It's basically a tool to um, manage your uh, yeah. A bit like um, Remember the Milk. Remember the milk yeah, 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 same kind of idea. Yeah. Okay. It's free. Yeah. <coughs> YouTube. LinkedIn for making connections. That's good because we've been talking quite a lot of these items, you know, but we've already found. I don't think we're talking about LinkedIn specifically, are we no. today? But uh, um, that's a good one for particularly as you're moving out of the university into the working world, establishing networks. It's a very good tool. Actually. Four Square for Education, that's an interesting one. Anyone <laughs> like to tell me about that? Because uh, that's basically a I'm here kind of app, isn't it? Who was that? Prepare to admit they say that. Okay. And somebody doesn't like Facebook. Yay! <laughs> <coughs> okay. So we're kind of <laughs> we're kind of taking it for granted that we have these tools now. They've been around for a while. They've become sort of ingrained. <coughs> um. And it's not that long ago that they were actually kind of introduced as a way for us to keep in touch with friends. But obviously today we are looking at um, educational purposes. And we could have listed lots and provided you with lots of lists of things that are used and what they're used for in the same way as your texts have just provided that information. But we were wanting to look at the educational benefit particularly. And the Guardian newspaper uh, ran a, a feature at the end of last year looking at how social media um, can enhance the learning ex the student experience and these are examples of tweets that educational people or educationalists sent in in response to that question um, and I'm kind of in the same camp as the person who <coughs> posted that tw uh, message about not using Facebook um, I'm much more um, I'm much happier using tw uh, Twitter I'm not much of a Facebook fan but I do quite like this example does this work? Ooh. This example over here about the idea of us um, using tools like Facebook to build a sense of community among international students. <coughs> um, I think that's a really nice use of the, um, of the media because for international students not only are they coming to a new country um, but they're coming to a new um, university and they're going to be learning um, on a new programme. There are many new things for them to get to grips with. Uh, and the idea of some of that stress perhaps being relieved in advance of the programme starting, getting to know one another online, getting to know a bit more about the institution and the programme, I do like that idea. I've got Twitter as an essential communication tool, that's what somebody else said, but I do agree with that. It's, for me, the best way to keep on top of what's happening in my field, um, what other educators are doing, what other, people, um, what other technologies people are using, um, what's good, what's bad, what's working, what's not. This is something that we sort of um, sort of subscribe to and what we sort of promote to um, academics when we're talking about the use of learning technologies and specifically the idea of using a discussion board. 
a lot of our work, we've been at the university for some time, and a lot of our work with academics started around using the VLE. <coughs> so what, what you know is my learning on UniHub. And the idea that quiet students, shy students, those who don't like talking up in class, can use some kind of technology to get their voice across so by using discussion boards where they can take time to compose their answers um, and what, what they want to say um, without having that kind of pressure of speaking up in class. I think that's a very good example. But um, we mustn't rely on these tools, as some uh, one person suggested. We can't let them rule us. Um, we should learn how to use them and how to use them appropriately. And the other um, nice example I found here, which we'll pick up on later, is the idea of, you know, what do you want to be known for? Think before you post. Um, and are people going to find what you have to say useful? 